Hi, my name is Mark Beverly from Beverly Mountain Guides. I'm based out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've been ice climbing for over 10 years, well, really over 15 years now, um, and I've been competing for approximately seven years. Uh, and one of the things that I'd like to share with you today is how to sharpen a, an ice pick. I'm going to um, use the Petzlnomics as well as the uh, the brand new, as of 2010, the new Petzl Ergos, um, and I'm going to show you that sharpening both of these picks is pretty much the same. <clears throat> I've got a new pick. This is a new Astro pick, and uh, I'd like to show you some of the, the nuances on how to sharpen your, your pick, um, even when it's brand new, right out of the box, right out of the package, uh, because there are some things that need to be considered when you're doing mixed climbing. and really what we're doing this for, why I'm doing this presentation, is to show you that there's some uh, really key points for mixed climbing picks. And I want to share the, the things that I picked up along the way from competing in International World Cups to uh, URA Ice competitions of some of the climbers that uh, have shared their knowledge with me and from uh, days in Canada and all kinds of places. So, <clears throat> uh, first of all, the, the pick itself uh, there's different types of picks. It really doesn't matter whether it's a dry pick or a regular ice pick. Um, I sharpen my picks all the same just because I pretty much anticipate on be that I'm going to be on ice as well as mixed terrain and rock. So um, I'll also sharpen my uh, mountaineering picks um, as, as pretty close to this as, as I can. Um, all right, so on the, on the new kind of aggro looking tools, you, you'll notice that there's some some top teeth as well and we'll talk about those we're going to talk about uh, how to sharpen the actual front pick and what to do with these other uh, picks in between this is very very sharp okay um, but we're gonna we're gonna change some of this just a little bit um, the top is also very sharp uh, it comes with some some teeth on the underside that are not as sharp maybe not as sharp as what you'd like and then on the top, like what I was talking about here, these are, I'll show you some of the functionality with this. Um, and we'll need to sharpen these as well. Okay, so if you're looking at one Astro pick versus the other, you say, well, what's the difference? The main difference is you can see that there's a big crescent that I've carved out. And how I've done that is I've taken out the first tooth and sometimes the second tooth, depending on how much of the pick has been worn away. Certainly the first, first tooth um, I'll take off as soon as I get the pick okay so here's kind of one of the aha moments um, when you have the the pick such as what I've done here with this ergo pick um, and you're coming up to a, a hold you'd say well why would you want to why would you want to really augment a pick like that well <clears throat> let me show you on this nitro's hold and the reality is is that you can see how the front of the pick clears and then the back picks kind of don't clear. Um, so we have to take them off. And I'll, I'll show you an example of that with the, the Astro here in just a second. But what I want you to notice is that look at how much play I have. So if I'm an idiot for just a second and I, I bring the tool down and I shift the tool, it's not going to play havoc. Now, if I bring the tool down too far, you can see how the, the front of the pick lifts up. However, if the, the front of the point, which puts a tremendous amount of pounds per square inch onto that point, um, can get into that, uh, you can see how I've got a lot of a lot of play on there. And now for the demonstration of the Astro Pick, this is a brand new one that's not been modified. And you can see how it immediately engages that secondary tooth, okay, and lifts the, the primary front point right off and then I could just come skating right out. And that's happened to me um, in competition before as well as in the real world. So, um, you know, that, that combination of, of things is really why I go and <clears throat> modify these tools. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how I do that. Okay, welcome to my shop. Um, this is uh, at least the first tooth needs to stay. And then after that, um, and after that, I want to get rid of this tooth here. So if you just use a flat bastard file, 
and I can carefully shave down that first tooth without affecting any of the other teeth. Okay, and you can see I'm getting that first tooth taken care of pretty quickly. You don't have to get real aggro on this. You know, you just need to make sure that uh, you're not increasing the, the temperature of the of the metal too much too fast and ruining the temper. So one way you could do that is by using a Dremel tool or a grinder. So most ice climbers are going to be using just a, a regular f set of files. Now I recommend you know a large file like this one to just do the the big dirty work, so to speak. You know and get the the gross stuff that you want taken down quickly so then you say well how much do you need to take off really well you know that's all a matter of preference um, obviously you want these other back teeth to kind of be around and engage for ice um, so there's a happy meeting of files that I have is this one right here is, is kind of a, a rounded um, more of a crescent or half moon and you can see on the profile there how it's kind of rounded. And I'll use this one and I'll just shave this out and I'll get rid of the bottom part of that tooth. And that's what's going to make a nice crescent shape on the underside of this pick. The Europeans and the Canadians were some of the first people to really think about doing this. And uh, Guy LaSalle was the one who taught me how to drop that first or the second tooth off so that the first tooth would engage. And I think Sean Isaac had written something up about it a long time ago, back in maybe the late 90s. Now with a flat file, you're not going to be able to make this rounded kind of kind of area in there, but with a rounded a round file, then you, you obviously are going to be able to do that. So one of the other things you can do is you can take a small 5 16 this is a round file, round, very round, and uh, and you can bring that off and, and just sharpen and make that point really, really sharp. So you can really drop nose the end of that pick if you like as well. Okay, so you can see how I can I can really make that pick drop nosed in there, and I'm gonna go back and forth in a kind of cross X pattern initially to kind of get rid of some of that and then I'll just buff it back out again. With this 5 16 file in between each one of these teeth okay is I'm just gonna bring this down and I'll just go straight on with these. Just go straight down um, for the first couple of teeth. Now this is gonna make these teeth extremely sharp way more sharp than they were even when I got it out of the box like this and so for the sake of time I'm not going to just go through here and, and do each one. Now I, I wouldn't use a 5 16 necessarily I might use a little bit bigger barrel um, you know going through here As, and the reason you want to do this is because when you're doing a stein pull or you if you're doing an upside down stein or something like that then, then you're really going to have a you're really going to be able to uh, to get a little bit better purchase and not skate around so much. All right, so I'm just trying to... All right, so there's a quick lesson on um, how to sharpen a uh, pick for mixed rock and ice climbing. If nothing else, I hope it was informative and that you'll use some of these tips in the future and also that it'll in help increase your performance as a mixed rock and ice climber. I know it's helped me out, so I'm just passing these tips along and I'll see you out there.